Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and today I am back to create another set of cards using the January 2022 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on the subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I stopped by on Sunday and told you about a new bonus printable that I created for January 2022. In that video, I shared a look at the supplies that are in front of me now and let you know I would be back later in the week to create a new set of cards. Today, I'm going to be using the bonus bonus printable that I am giving to channel members this month. It is a seven page PDF with various occasion sentiments. And if you want to check out that video and find out more about channel membership, it will be linked in the description box below. As always, the sheet load of cards itself is free to all subscribers. If you have not yet watched the debut or process video, I will have those linked as well. In the debut video, I tell you how you can download the free printable and give you a look at my first set. And in the process video, I show you how I made that first set. Up on screen now is a quick look at my first set of cards. I had a nautical theme for that set and my first bonus printable for the month had nautical themed sentiments to go with it. For today's card, I'm going to be using the page from the printable that has thinking of you, just a note, hello friend, and hello there. I thought I would be more likely to be able to send these cards out, so that's why I went with this sheet. I did go ahead and print this out at full size on a piece of lightweight white cardstock and later you will see me cut this down. For my focal point today I'm going to be using the Inky Antics Sending Hug Stamp Set and I'm going to use this cute little girl down here hugging the envelope with the heart. I'm going to be coloring with Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend markers and I just chose three that kind of go with the pattern paper which you'll see in a minute. I chose Gold Yellow Blend, Pale Pink Blend, and Pale Pink Shades. I am just going to be doing some selective coloring so I only needed those three colors. And because I'm using alcohol markers, I am using Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. I will of course be using the printable which will yield us nine cards when we're done with today's video. For my pattern papers, I know I mentioned it in those first two videos of the month, but I went to my local scrapbook store recently, which is Busy Scrapping here in Omaha, and found so many great lines from Minte. And in the original nautical themes that I made, those were Minte Marina papers, and today I'm going to be using Minte Childhood. I chose the white and yellow stars, the multicolored polka dots, and of course the multicolored rainbows because you know I love a rainbow. As I start with the process, I'll let you know about any other tools or products I use, but don't forget if I ever leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! Before we get to the process, I do have a special channel member shout out. I would like to say thank you and welcome to my newest paper trimmer level member, Dana Dowden. Thank you so much, Dana, for joining channel membership and for your support. Thanks as well to all of my other channel members. And if you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, I do have a link in the description box below. I started off today's cards by cutting down my pattern papers and my card stocks per the cutting guide. Now the only one I will show you how to cut is the sentiment. Don't forget if you're interested in seeing that full cutting process, you can check out the process video which is linked in the description box below. 
Now for the sentiment printable. On the bottom, it does have a reminder to print it at 100% and then cut it to the crop marks at two and a quarter inch squares. What I do is I rotate it and I use the two and a quarter inch mark to the left of the cut line to start cutting those strips. Now, when you line it up with the two and a quarter inch, like measurement, you'll want to make sure that the crop mark is going to show up where you cut. Sometimes you might have to adjust this just a little bit, but I'm going to continue cutting those two and a quarter inch strips, making sure that crop mark lines up, and then I will rotate them and cut them down to the final two and a quarter inches wide. Now, while I work on that, I do have a special subscriber surprise. While the seven page printable and the nautical printable are reserved for my channel members, I am going to let subscribers download this single page from the printable. I thought it was a nice little bonus and it will give you a taste of channel membership in case you were considering joining. If you would like to download this single page, I have a file linked at the very bottom of my description box below. You can open it and print it from screen or you can download it and print it as well. Now, one thing I do ask you is do not ruin this special surprise in the comment section. I do want to leave this freebie for the subscribers who are watching and listening to my entire video. Thank you so much and I hope you enjoy this little surprise. You will end up with 12 sentiments when you cut each sheet down. And since I only need nine for my set of cards today, I just chose the nine that I thought I would be most likely to use. And then it was time to move on to some stamping. So I can get started on the coloring, I want to stamp my focal image. To do this, I'm gonna show you an easy way to just cut a few pieces of paper and get all the images you need when you need multiples. I cut two squares that were five by five and then just a scrap for that ninth one. Now, the reason I decided on five by five was the height of my girl was about two and a half. So every time I rotate that, I want her to be able to stand up straight. I'm gonna start by setting her up in the corner, making sure when I do rotate the piece that she will still fit to the side. And then it's kind of like a wreath builder at this point. I'm gonna stamp and rotate, stamp and rotate, and keep going until I have filled up the paper. I do go ahead and stamp her twice because my ink pad is super dry and I wanted a nice solid black. Once the first four images were done, I then off screen stamped on the other square and that scrap, so I ended up with nine total images. When I do my coloring for these, I focus on one marker on all four images at a time. So I will do all the pink, all the yellow, and then all the cheeks. The first thing I'm gonna do is the heart on the envelope, and the color for that was inspired by the darkest pink in this rainbow. When I color with the Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend markers, I do as the company suggests. Start with the light, go to the dark, a little bit of mid-tone, and then light again. So here on the heart, I'm gonna color the entire thing in with the lightest color of the marker. And then where I want the shadow area to be, I'm gonna use the dark from the same marker and I colored in almost the left half of the heart. Then I bring in the mid-tone and I start about halfway into that dark area and color it out just a little bit into the light. Then I bring in the lightest color and go over everything. Now I have found sometimes with the lightest color, if I go over everything, it kind of lightens it too much. So sometimes you just might wanna mix from the mid back into the light. You can kind of play with that and see what you think. Then all I do is rotate and use that same marker to color in the next heart. When that heart is colored in, I rotate and so on and so on until all four of those hearts are colored in. Now I am gonna show you the entire process today sped up. Some of it though, I will not be talking. There will just be a little music. So if you don't wanna see the coloring, you could probably skip ahead just a little bit. 
The next color that I'm using is Gold Yellow Blend, and I will be coloring her headband. And once again, it was inspired by one of the arcs in the rainbow. For the headband, like before, I'm gonna color in the whole thing with the lightest color. And then I come in with the dark and I shade in from each end of the headband on her head. I color in the tiny dot in the middle of the bow and then just a little bit into each of the swirly things. Maybe the bows, I don't know what part that is. Then I bring in that mid-tone marker and color that out just a little bit. And then I bring in the lightest to finish it. And finally on each image, I want to add a little bit of pink to the cheeks. And it's hard to see on screen, but right at the corner of her mouth are a few little dots where I'm going to put that light pink color. This marker is the pale pink blend, and I just made a little circle with the lightest end. I did that to all four, and then this entire sheet of four was colored. So off screen, I colored the remaining images, and here's a look at those. I do not have a die for this stamp set and I'm not sure if they make one. So I use my brother's scan and cut to cut out all nine of my images. The next thing I did was mat my pattern paper pieces with their blue cardstock mats and then I moved on to creating the card kits. I did go over this in more detail in that process video, but while you watch me select the pieces for each of my cards, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. These are just fun little questions that I like to ask to get to know you better and let you know a little more about me. Now today's question was actually submitted by a channel member that is one of the perks of die cut and hire membership. And today, Heidi M. and I would both like to know, what trend do you see coming back to paper crafting? Or if you're not sure of one, what's a trend that you would like to see come back? You can answer that question in the description box below and make sure to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so we know you've answered it and would like us to see it. Now, the trend that I'm going to share never really went away for me, and that is embossing folders. I fell in love with the first one I ever bought like 15 years ago, and I have kept every single one that I've ever purchased. But lately I have noticed more companies coming out with embossing folders, but now they seem to be more of like a 3D or thicker effect, but I am so glad that I kept all my old folders so I can keep up with the times. I'm super excited to see what your responses are. Before I move on to assembling, I have a little more stamping to do. Originally, when I stamped my little girl image and then cut it out with my brother Scan and Cut, it did not, of course, save the shadow under the right leg. So what I want to do is set up my stamp where I think my little girl's gonna go later on that sentiment piece. And then I'm just gonna ink up just mostly the shadow area, sometimes I get her foot, and stamp that on the each of my nine sentiments. That way I don't have to hand draw that in later, but it still looks uniform with the left leg having a shadow as well. Now that all of the pieces were ready, I could start assembling the cards. I added adhesive mainly to just the center part of the sentiment block, and I centered that left to right and top to bottom, kind of on that vertical strip in the middle. Then to put my girl on, I added some foam tape to the back of each of the images, and I just like the little extra dimension it gives the card. I continued decorating the fronts of the cards until all nine were completed, and then I decided I would do a little decorating on the inside. And since I had those pattern paper strips left over from cutting my main pieces, I decided to bring those back in with my little trimmer so I could make some strips to go on the inside. 
What I did was cut the pattern paper pieces to four inches wide and then I cut them down to one half inch tall strips. Off screen, once all my pieces were cut, I did add a little angle in the right hand side, but here's a little look at how I did that. I just stacked up two pieces at a time and just cut an angle with my scissors. I chose two of the patterns to go on the inside of each card. It was a pattern paper that was in the background and on the vertical strip. So this first one I chose the rainbows and the polka dots. I placed the rainbows down first toward the bottom of the card and then I added the polka dots on top of it a little offset to the left. Then I just cut off the excess that was hanging off and here's a look at the inside. I continued decorating those insides and then off screen I added a little bit more decoration to the front. I got out some light blue diamond dots I had in my stash and I added a trio of three around the focal point using my fine tip glue bottles. Here is a close up look at all of the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made this set of cards using the January 2022 sheet load. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.